Uh, we get questions from time to time related to football, to development. We had a great question in from a female player called Kenzie Lewis. A big thank you, Kenzie, for sending in the question. Now, the question that she's asked is, and it's a double battle question, how does scouting work in Australia? And if there's any tips or advice I can give Kenzie, Call up the club asking when local trials are on and then go and attend trials. Now, in regards to being scouted for higher level, so as an example, if you want to go on to maybe play into the UK or into Europe and you want to play in one of the top leagues in the world, maybe in Spain, maybe in England, maybe the USA, it's obviously a little bit of a longer journey, but also amazes me in Australia how people do this back to front. Now normally, and this is how the system works within Australia, you've either got to be picked up or scouted by maybe one of your state coaches and then hopefully you get an opportunity to go on and represent them at national level and then there's opportunities that sometimes can come to maybe then heading into Europe or into the USA. However, there's a lot of people out there who offer trials and charge a premium for opportunities to go on to trials into Europe and to the UK. And this question that you've asked Kenzie is a great one because it's one that we cover in our professional player pathway events all around the world. So we run a two hour workshop where we educate mums and dads and players on not only how to make it as a player, but how to be scouted, how to get Also ready for that opportunity. For three reasons. One, the player is going to come back unsuccessful, upset, angry, deflated, and nine times out of ten they disappear out of the game. The mum and dad, number two, I've just gone ten to twenty thousand dollars into the hole for the so-called trial of an opportunity.
As I said, I've worked for teams like Liverpool in the past, Leicester City, Paris Saint-Germain. I've worked for Carlo Ancelotti, who's now the Real Madrid boss. I've been involved with the head of youth phases. I've worked with Pep Guardiola's assistant, who was assistant for seven years, a guy called Rodolfo Burrell. So we looked at it differently. We said, why don't we do this? Let's not charge anyone for the first entry point to come onto our programme. They can come in a room completely free of charge. Then we'll try and put some scholarships together for players. to me and to us at Euro Football Star. Then, once they've put the hard yards in, once we've recorded a certain level of data and objective data, we collect things like sprint speed, acceleration, deceleration, five key objectives in the game of football. We look at areas like scanning. We look at distribution, short distribution, long distribution. Okay, we look at recovery runs. So there's a whole heap of things we look at. Sure, when we take players across the realistic opportunities, we're not claiming to take your son and daughter to Barcelona or to Liverpool. Sometimes your son or daughter's opportunity could be with a private academy in the UK, it could be with a lower league team. Okay, once we open up the correct opportunity based on where your son or daughter is, we're guaranteeing a couple of things. One, we can open up a realistic trial and scholarship opportunity. Two, we are then also going to guarantee that they get that scholarship opportunity. Now also, Kenzie, this has been an amazing question and one final thing to finish on. Things around visas and being able to go overseas and play football in the UK or into the EU. The rules are different in the UK and in the EU, but what we do is on our programmes, we only look to take players across into the UK who are 16 years of age or older and we get them on an education visa. So once you're on that education visa, you're there to study for two years and then you can bolt on your football and hopefully that's where then you can start to live your dream and get an opportunity to play at a higher level. If you're going into Europe, we're very fortunate going into places like Spain and France. Players can move as young as 14. Now also, you might be saying, what about if my son or daughter's only on an Australian or only on a USA passport? That's fine if you're going in on an education visa and you're going over for study and we can get you some high level quality football bolters on the side. Now, if you hold a European or a UK passport, the difference is if you're moving back with mum or dad for football and re uh, for non-footballing reasons, i.e. mum and dad are going back for a job, then obviously you're fine to move back and then there can be opportunities that get opened up for you once you're living back in Spain or France or the UK. There is rules around FIFA though, that if you are a holder of a UK or an EU passport and you're solely trying to get back for football and reasons and you're a junior, you're not allowed to do that. But in a nutshell, there's three key areas that you should be taking away, Kenzie, and anyone who's listening on in.
contacts who can help us with your answer. Good luck with your football. Have a lovely week and we'll be in touch.